during these times when the church is getting attacked physically, spiritually, and everything else, um, don't give in to the gossip. Don't give in to the rumors. We, we have people, I'm hearing people are saying that. Oh, they don't believe in vaccinations. They don't believe this. They don't do that. They don't believe. What? We've never taught any of that. We've only taught it's your personal conviction with God and be responsible because that's what the Bible says, okay? So don't, don't, don't that's, that's nonsense. But overall, let's lift up the body of Christ. Let's, let's ask the Lord to heal, whether he uses the body he's given us or, or he wants to do something different. Let's just pray because um, God dwells in the praises of his people and we all need to get healthy and all get, need to get back together as much as possible. So with that being said, Nehemiah chapter 4 I'm glad I can be back up here with you, and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. And um, the building of the walls is, is, has commenced, and things are going pretty good um, during the time of Nehemiah. We're at about 455 or so B.C. Remember, Nehemiah was the king of Persia, uh, Xerxes out of Xerxes' cupbearer, and he asked to go back to his homeland of Jerusalem that he never had seen. He never saw Jerusalem. He was born in Persia, modern-day Babylon, Babylon, modern-day Iraq. Back then was Babylon, and then Persia took over after them. He had never been there, but he knew about his heritage, his home people, his faith, and his God. And God uses a guy that's basically a, a nobody, he gets put into a position as a cupbearer, which is a pretty good position, but he just gets a burden for God and God's people. And he prays for four months. And he says, God, you know, do something. Use me. I want to go back to my homeland and see how my people are doing. Because I, I heard there was a little revival some years ago with the rebuilding of your temple, but I, I heard it kind of sputtered out. And what's going on with the walls? And I, I, I hear the walls are still torn down and the gates were just burned up with fire. Lord, please do something. Use me. By the way, when you pray, pray that way. Say, God, you know, I want to do whatever it takes to get things done for your, for your cause. Don't pray, God, send somebody else to do it. Say, God, use me to do it. And most of the time, when you pray over certain things in your life and in the church and in the body of Christ and for the kingdom of God, you're the exact one God's going to prep to do it. And if not, God will send somebody else because of your prayer. But Nehemiah is filled up with passion and a burden, and he makes his way back. He gets leave from the king. Remember, the king lets him go, and he says, Nehemiah, you know something? I like you. You're a good guy. I don't usually do this. I don't do this for everybody. But for you, not that I care about your God or any of your faith and all that nonsense. That's what it was to the king. He goes, but I like you. He goes, so I'm going to let you go back. I'm going to let you go back to Jerusalem. I'm, I'm going to give you a long leave with pay, months on end. And then remember Nehemiah asked for helpers and an entourage and building materials and letters from the, from the king. And, and, and the king says, yep, take it all. You're good to go. Because God can change the hearts of men. That's why it's not your fight, it's the Lord's fight. Now listen, the building commences because Nehemiah first goes around the city and he is brokenhearted for the condition of the city of God, Jerusalem, and the gates and the walls that are torn, torn down and have been toppled over for decades. And he brings a few people with him and he goes, all right, did you see everything that I just saw? Now let's get together and do something about it. And they're like, well, well how are we going to do that? Well, what do you mean? We need a, 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 a whole team of laborers here. We need thousands of people. Well, how are we going to do this? And they, and, and you know what Nehemiah says? He goes, well, let's pray. And he prays. And then they come up with simple wisdom. They say, okay, we prayed. Let's do it like this. Let's get the people who live next to these areas and portions of the wall. Let's see if we can stir them up to get excited about fortifying their own families and their own stuff. And they do. And they go, and they go through, and as you read through chapter 3, 38 individual people are mentioned in the building of the walls around Jerusalem, and 42 different people groups are mentioned. And they all build next to someone. Next to someone. 
And they're, they're stirred up and they're on fire. They believe they can actually do this. They weren't builders. They weren't engineers. Nehemiah is just a cupbearer, but he's got a passion for the things of God. Things are going well. The walls are up to about halfway in no time. Just a few weeks. And when things are going good, don't you know that things are going to get real difficult? About a month, we were filled up in here for the nine. We were filled up for the 11, filled up on Wednesdays. Now it's sparse. You know what? Because God wants to do more. There's going to be a breakthrough. I'm telling you right now. I know that's why. I know that's why. Praise the Lord. Now listen. But it's hard to see things that way when you're in the midst of the battle. Because you can't help but look around and look at all the difficulties. It's hard sometimes not to look around and, and, to, keep our, and, and to just keep our focus on the Lord. Because you do have to deal with everything around you. Now, things are going good. Things are going well. The, the, the rebuilding of the walls, things are going great. There's a revival. People are getting excited again after 16 years of rubbish and rubble sitting there. Now, it's going to get difficult. You're going to see a but in chapter, chapter 4 of Nehemiah, verse 1. But it came to pass that when Sanballat heard that we built at the wall... He was wroth. He was upset. And he took great indignation and he mocked the Jews. Now you're going to see in this chapter, there's going to be some verbal persecution and conspiracy to, to hold down the people of God. And then as you move through the chapter, then it's going to move into what can we do to attack them physically? Physically. Verbal persecution. And then it's going to be physical. Now listen, we have an adversary, the devil, that goes about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. We battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. And you know what? If you haven't noticed, that battle doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Satan doesn't take a day off, all right? But God doesn't take a day off either. Now listen. The people are excited. They're on fire. They're like, wow, we can actually do this. And they're just getting rolling. They, they can see that maybe they can get this thing done. And then there's going to be a but. There's a couple of them in this chapter. Sanballat, again, who's the governor of the north of Samaria. He's going to get involved. He's going to come. He's going to gather up some critics to try to hold the people of God down from doing the work of God. Listen, you cannot li listen to that stuff. You cannot listen to that stuff. No matter who it comes from in your personal life. Oh, you're going to that church and you, 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 you carry a Bible now? And why are you always reading these scriptures on your phone? What is wrong with you people? I mean, what's going on? You know, hey, yeah, you, you were happy for a couple weeks, but now where's your God? What's going on now? Can't listen to that. Listen. Somebody told me once before that if you don't believe in spiritual warfare, go into the ministry. Go into the ministry. Try to really do more for Jesus, and then you'll see it ramped up. You'll see it ramped up. You'll see the talkers. You'll see the mockers. You'll see the scoffers, the, the, the physical things that happen to your body, the physical things that might happen from without. Listen, it's real, but God is bigger, and that's what you're going to see in this chapter. But it came to pass that when Samballad heard that we builded the wall, he was wroth. He's angry, and he took great indignation, and he mocked the Jews. Now, why is he upset? He's upset because, well, wait a minute. If they gather up this power in the south, that might minimize my power in the north. People get upset sometimes in the body of Christ when they think things are getting taken away from them. I want this job and this ministry and this position and I want to do this and I want to have that and I want to do this. And, and people sometimes do things in the body of Christ and they start to serve and God might give them a position. But listen, if you, you're ever that person that gets afraid because someone can do it better than you or someone's growing next to you or building next to you and, and if you're that person that has to look at them and keep them at bay or hold them back or hold them down, there's something wrong there. 
You should be praying that people can do a lot of things better than you. You know, uh, that's what I pray for. You know why? Because then you don't have to do it. Seriously. But Lord, let them do it. That's what I pray for around here, by the way. I do. Like, this one wants to do this. This one wants to do that. And my, my biggest thing is, as long as they have the right heart, let them do it. Let them do it. Let them do more for the kingdom of God. But when you get like this, you know what? What are they going to do? What if they, what if they do this? What if they get like that? What if they're, they're better at it than me? What, what's going to happen? You know, people always get nervous when something's going to get taken away from them. What do you think what's going on with Sanballat, Tobiah? And all the enemies are around. They get nervous. They get scared when the, when, the, when the walls of Jerusalem are starting to go up and the people start to get excited about the things of God because they're afraid they're going to lose something. They're afraid they're going to lose their power. Listen, the spiritual warfare is going to get ramped up on the Jews. When you move forward for Jesus, people are going to talk. People are going to say things. The spiritual warfare is going to get ramped up on you. Now listen. One great author said, uh, his name's Redpath, Alan Redpath. He said, if you really want to do more in ministry, he said, you have to have the mind of a scholar, you have to have the heart of a child, and you have to have the hide of a rhinoceros. All right? And when I, when I was listening to that quote and I was reading it, and I was like, wow, that's so true. You got to be on your game. You got to know what the Bible says. You got to know how to rebuke the gainsayers, as Paul would put it in, in his epistles. You got to know what the Bible says. You got to stand on the word of God. But then you have to have the heart of a, of a child. What do children do? Children believe. You have to believe if you're sh- as you're shepherding God's people that, you know what? You can do this. I believe in you. Oh, but they already messed up six times. They hurt some people. No, I can't, can't use them. They can't do it. No, you got to believe in them again. you got to have the heart of a child, and you have to have the hide of a rhinoceros because people are going to poke you and prod you and do what they can to, to put you out and put you down, but it doesn't matter because you're going to see God's going to come through. So he's wroth, and he mocks the people of God. And look what he says. And he's, in verse 2 it says, And he spake before his brethren in the army of Samaria. So he has some troops with him. All right? And said, What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Will they sacrifice? Will they make an end in a day? Will they revive the stones out of the heaps of rubbish, rubbish which are burned? By the way, the answer to all those things is yes. Yes, they're going to fortify themselves. Yes, they're going to sacrifice again. Yes, they're going to get the work of God done real quickly. That was the figure of speech. What do they do? They're going to get this done in a day? Look how fast they're moving around. They don't even know what they're doing. Are they going to revive these stones out of the rubbish that's all over them? Yes, 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 yes. You know why? Because God, 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 God. That's why. And he starts to mock. And he starts to scoff. And he starts to gather up other people. And then he starts to be a bully. He gets his troops on the border. What do these feeble Jews? What do these feeble Jews? Will they fortify themselves? Are they going to make these walls again? They think they're going to be able to protect themselves? <laughs> Listen. Listen. Know what Jesus Christ is doing in our lives? He's building us up. He's making us more like him. He's making us so we're able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Devil. He's fortifying you. He's building you up with the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit and the helmet of salvation so you can go to work for God wherever you are. That's what he's doing for you. Listen. We're not to be tossed about by every wind of doctrine and by everything that's going on in the, on the news and be afraid and scared and, and, and withered and, and beaten down. No, we have Jesus Christ. He builds us up. If God is for us, who can be against us, the Bible says? Listen, 
Praise the Lord. God and you are a majority. If you have Jesus, it doesn't matter. He's on your side. He's on your side. Yes, you'll fortify yourselves. Look what it says. Will they sacrifice? Well, they, you know, they started this temple project 16 years ago, and that fizzled out. Now they think they're going to get the, the, the gates and the walls built and bring, start bringing their sheep in again for sack and worship of their so-called God. Is that what they think they're going to do? Yep. Yep. Will they revive these stones out of the heaps of rubbish? Look at all the trash all over these stones. Remember, around the walls of Jerusalem, they had been down for decades. There was heaps of trash and dust and dirt and rubble just all over the stones that used to make up the walls. What do they think they're going to do? They think they're actually going to clean all this stuff up? It's been like this for decades. They're going to. They're going to. Listen, when we look at things, sometimes things look insurmountable in our lives. And the things that we struggle with and the things that we battle with, the pain, the depression, the past, family, and everything else. And you think with you and your Jesus, you're going you're gonna to get victory over all those areas in your life? You and your Jesus, you're going to get some, you're going to be able to build your life back up and you're going to get over that pain and that depression. You can't do that. You need this pill, you need that pill, you need this pill, you need that. You need this one, you need this one's book, you need this one's this. You can't do it. And, and, and that's what I tell people. I say, no, you just need you and Jesus, you and Jesus and the word of God and the Holy Ghost because the word of God cuts and the word of God heals. And the Holy Spirit is at work in that. You and Jesus, and you can do it. And it's going to be a process, and sometimes it's really painful. But don't tell me my God can't do it in you because he can. Don't tell me, don't tell me he can't because he can. Oh, but you don't know what you're talking about, Pastor Matt. You need this person. You need that. You need this diagnosis. You need all these things. I say, no. And I, and, and I say, do a little study. Do a little study, a little research. When people get this and they get that and they're given this and they're given that, that didn't work, and then they're on to this and that and this. And then it's, it's in the, and it never stops. Jesus can revive your life out of the, out of the rubbish. Jesus can build you up in your most holy faith. The Bible says he's able to present you faultless before his throne, body, soul, and spirit. That's what the Bible says. Anybody says, well, maybe your spirit, when you see him one day, he can do that. But your body and your soulish things, he, it, you know, that's not for you to figure out. That's not what the Bible says. The people are lying to you. Can you revive these stones out of the heaps of, heaps of rubbish? Yes. Yes, he can. You all have a story here. You all have a testimony. And God's not done writing it yet. God has started something in your life. And listen, it says, he who has begun a good work in you will perform it, will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Because he's doing the work. He's the potter. You're the clay. It's your job just to yield to what the potter wants. And he will build your life up out of the heaps of rubbish. And he'll make it mean something. And he'll make it count for time and for eternity. And he mocks them. Are they going to fortify themselves? What, are they going to sacrifice again? They're going to revive themselves out of these stones, out of the heaps of the rubbish. Do they really think they're going to do this? Now, listen, when there's critics, right? When critics come, they don't just travel by themselves. They need a, they need a crowd. They need some other critics with them. When people talk, when people mock, when people gossip, right, they're not just doing it to themselves, they need a crowd to say, hey, that's true. Hey, that's right. Yeah. So now Tobiah, he goes with Sam Ballot, nice guy. 
the Ammonite was by him, with him. And he said, even that which they build, now they're, they're, they're like going back and forth, mocking the Jews together and get, gathering up their little armies and their people groups, right? Now, Tobiah the Ammonite was by him, and he said, even that which they build, even if a fox goes up on it, he shall even break down their stone wall. They go, Tobiah says, yeah, let's mock back and forth. Let's get our people together to gather to, you know, gather together and mock and conspire against the people of God. He goes, let me say, let me tell you something. Even if this stuff they're building, if a little fox walks on the top of it, it's just going to tumble down because they don't know what they're doing. They have no clue what they're getting themselves into. They don't know. They don't know. Listen, don't listen to it. Don't listen to it. When the world tells you, when the radio tells you, when people in your family tell you, when whoever tells you, you really don't know what you're getting yourself into. You really can't do this. You, 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 do you understand what you're, what you're trying to do in your life right now? You, you and your Jesus and, and your Bible and your church stuff? Do you, don't listen to it. Don't listen to it. Yes. Don't take the glory from Jesus Christ. Let Jesus have his way in your life. Now, people come and they say, Pastor Matt, how do I get involved in ministry? How do I do more? And know what I tell them? I don't know. Seriously. I don't know. I say, follow me as I follow Christ. Find some people in the church who love Jesus. Follow them as they follow Christ. Well, isn't there a pattern? Isn't there a plan? Isn't there, don't I got to earn this and do that and, and get to this place and to this point and, you know, get this? education and then this degree and then this how to you know how to construct a church and how to build a church and how to gather up leaders and how to and I said yeah that's all right in, in, in here it's in, it's in here and it just says in the book of Acts you had a bunch of fishermen that just prayed waited for the power of the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost comes and fills them, and they just start telling people they love Jesus and telling people to come to Jesus. And all of a sudden, people are getting saved. The Grecian women start to get saved. The Jewish women start to get saved. Then there's little fights in the church, and then they pray, and they ask God for wisdom, and then they sort it out. Then they start to do ministry, and things start to happen. So I don't know. But Jesus said this. Did he not? Did he not say, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it? And the church is still here over 2,000 years later. How is that? They didn't have any particular formula, patent, or anything, but they had the Holy Ghost. They had people who loved Jesus. And that's why they're looking from the outside in, saying, they're not qualified to do this. We have this Jew cupbearer from, from Persia. Didn't even grow up around here. He doesn't know the landscape. He doesn't know the people. He doesn't know how it works around here. And he's going to lead this team of families that never even saw this guy before to build these walls and these gates again? What's he, out of his mind? Yeah, he's out of his mind. But he's in his right mind because God was on his side. Because God was on his side. Don't listen to everybody else. You can't do this, and you can't do that. You don't know what you're getting yourself into. You know what I say? You go seek the counsel from the wonderful counselor, Jesus Christ. You go get alone with him. You seek his face. You seek his counsel. He will give you all the wisdom that you will need to do whatever God has called you to do. That's the truth, because that's what they're going to do. So what happens when the naysayers come and the people come against them and the conspiracies are going to start flying? Listen, they're going to go to God. Verse 4, hear, O our God, for we are despised and turn their reproach upon their own head and give them for a prey into the land of captivity. Look what he says. He says, God, do you hear this? Do you hear what they're saying? He goes, hear from us, God. We are despised. God, how are we going to bring these stones out of the heaps of rubbish? God, can you hear this? Can you give us the wisdom? 
Yeah, God's going to. Now listen, they go to God, and he goes to God, and he prays. So I want to say this to you. When the, when the scoffers come, when the mockers come, when the people talk, when, and when family or whoever it is, neighbors, whoever it is, listen, you got to go to God. you got to talk to Jesus. You know, Pastor Matt, that seems like that's in every sermon. Pray, talk to Jesus. Yep. Because if we all did that all week long, I'd be out of a job here. Seriously. Seriously. We don't. I need to be reminded. We need to be reminded. They go to God. Everything's going great, but then the naysayers come. Then the talk starts. Then the conspiracies are going to start going on. Then the physical persecution is going to come. Listen, this life is way too hard for you to live on your own. And you know what? You weren't meant to live it on your own. But Jesus Christ will live it in and through you if you let him. If you let him. God's building up our lives out of the rubbish, out of the stones. You know what it says in 2 Peter? It says you are lively stones, living stones, built upon your most holy faith able to offer up spiritual sacrifices unto our God as God builds up our lives. He makes us spiritual priests. A priest is a go-between. We can go to God, right to, right to God through Jesus Christ because God's building up your life. You're living stones, the scriptures say. Out of a heap of rubbish, on your way to hell without Jesus Christ, Perdition and waste. Now in Christ, you're living stones. You are the building of God. You are the people of God. You mean something to God. You make up the house of God. And you're able to offer up spiritual praise as a spiritual priest to God. They said, Hear, our, hear our, O our God, we are despised. Turn their reproach upon their own head. Give them for a prey into the land of captivity. Cover not their iniquity. Let not their sin be blotted out from before thee. For they have provoked thee to anger before the builders. Now listen, they go to God and then they trust God that he's going to deal with them. He's going to chastise them. They trust God that he is going to mete out judgment upon them from forgetting in the way of the people of God and the work of God. That's what, listen to me, hear me. <coughs> the Democrats aren't my enemy. That's what I get. People come and they say, Pastor, Pastor Matt, sometimes the way you preach, you, you, you sound like you, you belong to that particular Democratic Party because you sound like you're, and I'm like, this isn't about parties here. There might even be some Democrats that come here. Whoa! can't say that. How can you be a Christian and be a Democrat? Are you kidding me? I'll find evil on both sides. On the main issues, of course I align with one side. But this isn't about that. The kingdom of God is bigger than all that. Bigger than all that. His kingdom rules over all. No, no political party is my enemy. People aren't my enemies. The lost people aren't my enemies. People are lost. They're not your enemy. They're lost. Your adversary is the devil who wants to hold back the work of God and the people of God and the kingdom of God. But you know what? God will deal with it. And you need to trust God that he's bigger than that, that he hears all that, that he knows what's going on with all that. And you're going to keep your head down and you're going to put your faith in Jesus Christ that it doesn't matter what happens in the political realm. It doesn't matter what happens <coughs> with your finances or lack thereof, that God is bigger than all of that because he is. It doesn't matter what people are saying when they're talking and they're conspiring. Now, you're going to see in just a minute, they're going to use wisdom. They're not just going to say, hey, we're just going to pray and we're not going to pay attention. No, I'm not saying that. That would be stupid. That would be stupid. That would be tempting God. But they go to God and they pray. And then they trust God that God's going to deal with it. 
You know why? Because all Satan is trying to do here is cause a distraction to slow the work of God down. I'm not going to let no coronavirus slow the work of God down in Great Rock Church. It's not going to happen. No way. You can't let that happen. You can't let that happen. You got to go to God. You got to trust God. I'm not going to let any of that happen. Slow down the work. It's trying to create a distraction to slow the work of God down. And sometimes we get looking everywhere else at this distraction and that distraction and what's going on over there. And we get enamored with the things of the world and it just slows the work of God down. But you cannot let that happen. You got to keep your eyes and your heart and your mind fixed on Jesus Christ. Because you know what happens? Very simple illustration I heard from a preacher a long time ago. You ever notice when you're driving on a straight road on the highway, all right? If you start to gaze off to something to the right, you know what, you, you know what the wheel's going to do, right? You start to do this. Because you're looking that way. That's why you got to look straight. You got to stay focused and you got to go straight. But it's just you start looking over there, you start gazing off, and you got to go, oh, you got to get your car back on. Distractions. You can't let that happen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and what is right and his righteousness, and God will add everything else unto you, no matter what's going on around you. So last, last point here, I wanna, I'm going to tell you this. Listen, when the trials come, when the persecutions come, when the talk comes, when the difficulty comes, when the conspiracy theories come, listen, you go to God, you pray, you talk to Jesus. A lot. And you trust God that he's going to deal with it. And you know what? Verse 6, you get it done. You get it done, Nike. I don't want to use the name of a, a pagan god up here, but you get it done in the name of Jesus Christ. So built we the wall. So built we the wall. And all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. They got it done. They kept going. They were where they wanted to be. It says, now the wall wasn't completely finished. But to that point in the building program, it was more than halfway. They were way ahead of schedule. It says, so we kept building the wall. <coughs> oh, the coronavirus. Well, I got to put my, my stuff I do with the church on, on hold for, you know, a year until I figure all this stuff out. Oh, the economy. Oh, the gas prices of four fifty a gallon. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're going more. You didn't know that was going to happen, right? Oh, and when that gets in, when things get back to normal, then I want to do more for God, and then I just, it, it, things are, you know, it's just slowing down right now. No. Oh, my family, this is going on now. God will give you the strength to deal with all of that. Don't halt what Jesus Christ wants to do in your life because of all those distractions. You get it done. You keep going. You persevere. So built we the wall. They stayed on schedule. They didn't stop. They didn't slow down. They didn't say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Everything was going really good. And now Sanballat, Tobiah, and all these other people are coming against us. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? No, you pray you, you ask God for wisdom. You trust that God's going to deal with all that stuff, and you keep going, and you get it done in the name of Jesus Christ. So, look what it says. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof, for the people had a mind to work. Listen to me. You know what the problem is? For the work of Jesus Christ in our towns, in our communities, I'm going to tell you this. This is the only thing. Jesus says the harvest is plentiful, right? The harvest was plentiful back then. The harvest is plentiful today. People need to get saved all out there, and people need to be discipled in here. The harvest is plentiful. There's a lot of it. The problem's not with them. The problem's not, oh, it's the devil, Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. Oh, it's my health. Oh, it's money. Oh, it's finances. Oh, no, but the laborers are few. The laborers are few. 
Want to labor? You want to labor? Well, Pastor Matt, I can't labor. I'm not a preacher. Can you labor in prayer? Can you labor in prayer? Well, 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 well Pastor Matt, I, I, I can't do this, and I'm, I'm not a preacher. I'm not an evangelist. And I, yeah, I pray, but you know what? Well, can you, can you work? Can you support the work of the ministry? Can you give? Can you do that? Well, Pastor Matt, I don't have much, and I'm, I'm not much of a prayer. I do spend some time in prayer. I don't know. Can you mop a floor? Can you? I don't want to do that. Then God can't use you. The laborers are few. There was no glory in this work. Glory in, think about it, taking the rubble, the trash, decades of trash that was built up over these stones and dirt and decades of trash. They had to literally clean it off, clean it out, find the stones, clean them off, set the mortar, have the sword in one hand and the trowel in the other. You're going to see as we move through the next chapters. There's no glory in any of that. They got dirty. It was ugly. And you got to get in it sometimes. You can't be afraid to get dirty. Well, I didn't know God was going to ask me to do this or that. I mean, this is like humiliating. So, yeah, sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. Well, I started more for, to, 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 to do more for Jesus, and then I got more problems from people from within the church than people from without. Well, welcome to the club. Hide of a rhinoceros. Right? So what? You keep going because you love Jesus. He's your motivation. Paul said, the love of Christ constrains me. Nothing's going to stop me, he said, because I love Jesus. I love Jesus. The people had a mind to work. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The laborers are few. You know how many people start getting going for Jesus and they, they, they want to do more in the church, outside the church, and they start to discover their gifts and use their gifts. And then what they, they, you know how many times I've heard this? They come to me and they say, this is starting to feel like work, you know. And I don't get paid. And I say, okay, all right. I'm like, that's normal. Because it's labor. It's not fun all the time. You need to have a mind to work and keep working and keep laboring for the kingdom of God and for the things of God. You need to persevere. You need to get it done. Keep going, but I can't, but I can't, but I can't, but I can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because Jesus can. You're going to see in a few minutes here, there's going to be a, a, a family that comes and says, I can't. Well, I'm hoping I can get there. A few more verses. Let's go. Second but. Verse 7. But, all right, the people kept going, kept working. They got it done. They got that wall over halfway built. But it came to pass that when Sanballat, he's from the north, and Tobiah, he's from the south. Listen. And the Arabians, they're from the south. And the Ammonites, they're from the east. And the Ashdodites, all worshipers of false gods, they're from the west. All right? heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, they were very wroth. says a few verses before to, uh, that Sam Ballot was upset, he was wroth. Now they're really upset. Now listen, know what's funny? Because <laughs> all these groups, the Ammonites, the Ashdodites, the Arabians, they didn't really get along. You know what they got along in though? Hating the people of God. Doesn't that make, doesn't that just how, how it works? They didn't really get along. But when it came to God and the people of God, they all got along. And they're all going to start to conspire now. And they're all going to start together. You say, Pastor Matt, you know what? They prayed. Shouldn't it have got better right away? But when Nehemiah went to prayer with the people, shouldn't it have gotten better right away? No, it's going to get harder. Because you wrestle not against flesh and blood. You know what? You ever wrestle somebody? I was good at wrestling. I wasn't good in boxing. I don't know how, because when you're wrestling, you can kind of grapple and get a breath, and you can do that in boxing too, but you, you, you ever wrestle? It takes a lot out of you. It's not just, hey, pinned. That other guy ain't going to give up. And when you wrestle, there's a battle that takes place. 
And it says, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood, against people, against the Democrats, the Republicans, the community. You don't wrestle that way. You're wrestling in your mind with all the craziness that is going on in the world and in your life. And that stuff just doesn't stop. But it's amazing when you keep wrestling and you keep persevering and you keep being obedient to the scriptures and you keep praying and you walk with Jesus, somehow, some way, he has a way to bring you peace in the midst of all the chaos. Does he not? Because he does. He does. Because he's in control of all of it. He knows what's going on in your life, in this church, with the virus, with this ancient story. He's got it all under control. You got to walk in that. You got to trust that. You got to believe that. And you will be able to persevere. Now, listen, they pray, and it doesn't get better, it gets harder, it gets more difficult. Now you get people from the north, south, east, and west. Now they're all buddies against the people of God. It says they, they were wroth, very wroth, and they conspired all of them together to come to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. What can we do to stop the work of God? Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So listen, here's wisdom. They go to God again. They pray. They talk to the Lord. Lord, help us. Lord, give us grace. Lord, give us wisdom. Lord, protect us. And they don't just pray, but it says we prayed and we put a watch. They set some people up on those half-built walls. Keep an eye on what's going on out there. Keep your ear open. Don't get depressed. Don't get down. But know what's going on out there. Pay attention. You go to God in prayer and you pay attention. You go to God in prayer and you watch. That's what the Bible tells us to do. Pray and watch. Pray and occupy. Pray and move forward. We don't just sell everything we have, say we believe in Jesus, and sit up on a mountain and just Pray to Jesus. No, he works in and through you. You pray as if it all depends on God because it does, and you work as if it all depends on you because it does. And you know what? You don't get any of that glory. He does. And I'm okay with that. That's good. Because people see the work of God in your life in your church, and what God has called you to do. That's what matters. Why do you think all these enemy groups are so upset? Why? It's because they are angry at God. It's not about the people of God. It's about the God of the people. That's why. That's why. When people don't like this and like what you do and what you're trying to live for and what you're trying to build your life on, it's not about you. They could care less about you. Don't make it about you. You're a nobody, just like me. But they hate the somebody that's behind you, which is Jesus Christ. It's Jesus Christ. I'm almost done. And Judah, he starts to give in a little bit to the pressure, said, the strength of Verse 10, of the bearers of burdens is decayed. Those who are carrying and going through the rubbish. They're, he goes, they are getting a little weary and doing well. They're, going, they're really going through it. The strength of the bearers of burdens is decayed, and there is much rubbish so that we are not able to build the wall. And our, advers our adversary said, they shall not know, neither see, till we come into the midst among them and slay them and cause the work to cease. So this... this particular family comes and they say their strength is starting to get a little worn thin so to speak and they can't keep up they can't keep up going through all this trash and all this rubbish and what's going to happen as they're going through all the trash and all the rubbish the Sanballats and the Tobias and the Arabians and the Ashdodites they could be sneaking up on us in the middle of the night as we're trying to work all night and all day going through this trash and they could pounce on us 
What are we going to do? We can't do this anymore. We can't do this. That's what they're saying. We can't do this. We can't do this. Nehemiah is going to tell them, yes, you can. He's going to tell them, yes, you can. He's going to tell them, work harder. He's going to tell them, get a sword in one hand, like I said, and a trowel in the other, and put more watchmen on the wall. We can do this. Because I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You can. Don't say you can't, because you can. Pastor Matt, you don't know my aunts, my family, my background, my history. You don't know what goes on in my mental psyche. You don't know. I can't, I can't, I can't. Don't tell me you can't because my Jesus can. Because he can. He can. He used a little boy, 13 years old to take down the most powerful warrior on the planet and Goliath with a little stone and a sling. He can. He can. And I said this before. I don't know if David wound that sling up. He could have threw it the wrong way. It would have went like this and hit him in the head. Because he can. He's used, he used the guy that thought he was something in Egypt when he was young, and then he ends up being a, sh- a shepherd on the back of the, the back side of the desert for 40 years, realizing he's nothing. And he goes, now you're ready to go take on the most powerful person in the whole world. Buy yourself with your stick and your stupid brother Aaron. Go take him on. Don't tell me he can't because he can. And don't tell me that. He was the Apostle Paul, the, the smartest guy probably to ever walk the earth beside the Lord Jesus Christ himself, memorized the whole Old Testament. And he says, Paul, you know something? I, I, I don't need your Old Testament skills and knowledge. You're not going to preach to the Jews. You go preach to the Gentiles that know nothing about the Word of God. Paul goes, what, what? <laughs> Planted all kinds of churches. We're still here today because of that. He used the fisherman Peter. All he could do was look good on the outside and be a big man, but on the inside he was a coward. And he turns him around and he was the foundation of the church in Jerusalem. Don't tell me you can't because you can. Listen to me. He was the kid who grew up about five cities south of here in the middle of nowhere where people say, can anything good come out of that area of Rivera and Shirley Ave. When all my friends from down there, they're all dead. They're all dead. Not from natural causes either. And he made him a pastor and a preacher and a, a church planter. Don't tell me you can't because you can. Because he can. Amen? Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Give Jesus the glory. Let's pray. Lord, um, we just thank you so much, Lord, for your word, for your grace, for your spirit, for everything you are, Lord, and everything you do for us. We are so thankful, Lord. And I pray for my brothers and sisters this morning that are here, and maybe some are watching at home, Lord. And I pray for the sick, Lord. Lord, I pray for the downtrodden. I pray for the depressed, Lord. I pray for those who are lonely, Lord. I just pray that you'd fill us up again with your spirit, Lord. you fill us up again with your grace, Lord. That we would walk by faith and not by sight. Lord, that we would press on and press forward, even if it's hard, even if we don't understand, Lord, that we would look to you, that we would trust you, God. Lord, I just pray that the things that are clouding our view and our vision of you, Lord, that you just, just wash them away, Lord, that we would see you clearly, Lord, so we can glorify you more. Forgive us our sins because they're many, Lord, and we know we'll never be perfect until we see you face to face, Lord. But help us to be a little bit more holy, Lord, this week than last week, because you are holy, Lord Jesus. I ask these things in your name. Amen.